Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone. How's it going today? Welcome to Fantasy Film Ball, the show where we turn movies into sports and sports into something we don't talk about here. My name is Matt. And my name is Dill, and today we are going over some SAG predictions. These are the last time we get to do this because SAG Awards are happening this week. It's crazy. I feel like the season just started like a week ago, and we're already here at the final stages. And Matt, how do you feel about SAG before we even dive into the first nominations? I want to say the opposite from from you. I want to say that this season has felt like forever because do you remember in 2019 when it felt like there was an award every weekend and then it was like, bam, the Oscars are here. That was great. That was fantastic. Whereas right now, what I've felt, I mean, we had BAFTA today when, when we're recording this, but the last awards we had were at the beginning of January, right? We had the Critics' Choice Awards last. And so it has been a wait to get here it's been so long and i'm just excited that now we're actually getting into the thick of it because we just had baftas we're about to have sag uh we also have pga and then we've got indie spirits and then the oscars so it's all coming up so fast now anything's better than that nomadland year where nothing happened until the oscars so the it is true. We're, we're slow we're slowly getting back there but yes sag ensemble i think we should start there sag ensemble this is the big one we just got the news that all quiet on the western front won the bafta award i think that sag ensemble holds more weight now than ever before because whatever wins here gets a big boost for best picture and the nominees of course in gold derby odds order are everything everywhere all at once the Banshees of Inisherin, The Fablemans, Women Talking, and Babylon. I mean, I have those 100 to 1 odds on Babylon. Give me those double points. No, I'm not taking Babylon. So, to me, it's between everything everywhere and Banshees, obviously. But, Gold Derby has Women Talking in fourth. I feel like it's probably number three. I feel like if something upsets, it's that more so than The Fablemans. However, uh, I, I'm leaning everything everywhere because that just makes more sense for a SAG winner. It, it fits to the feel of a CODA and some of the more recent winners. However, Banshees has everything it needs to win this award. It has every actor nominated respectively. And probably, I'm going to say that lightly, probably none of them are going to win their own awards. So this is the way to award the cast while in everything everywhere's chance it could have two winners. And... I don't think it's actually going to win two, but it could have two. I would say it's more likely to win two than Banshees wins one. Um, So, I don't know. I'm leaning everything everywhere. I'm going to keep that in, but I would not be shocked if Banshees walks away. I'm also going everything everywhere. I think that it fits the pattern that we've seen recently, which is we love this cast. It doesn't matter how many people are nominated. Banshees, to me, honestly, I'm a little bit surprised it's here because if I look back last year, The Power of the Dog feels like what Banshees would be, where it's got a ton of great performances that all stand out, that all get nominated, but Power of the Dog didn't get nominated in the ensemble category last year. I don't know. I think if there's an upset, it's going to be women talking, not Banshees. I would say Ban- I, th- I would say the fact that Banshees is in here is a sign of strength for it, though, that was able to overcome that normal, hey, we love your actors, but we're still going to snub you, the mank, the... Uh, power of the dog there's like one of those every year where it's clearly hey this movie should be in but guess what you missed and the fact that it was able to overcome that to me says like hey they kind of want to give it an award however like you mentioned everything everywhere fits the bill of what a sag ensemble lineup is it's diverse it's high energy it's fun and it's just radiates like positivity and that movie does banshee's does not absolutely so let's move on to film actress where the nominees are michelle yo in everything everywhere all at once kate blanchett in tar viola davis in the woman king daniel deadweiler in till and anna diarmas in blonde i don't want to be the one to say it but i will blanchett's winning yeah why is michelle yo in first here i'm gonna say that i'm gonna late, say that late saying switches? that i really wish that this would be michelle yo winning i watched tar again last night i was wrong about it i really really like that movie but i still my heart is still with michelle yo in this category i would love to see this happen but i just don't see it happening blanchett has swept so far but that said kwan had swept up until the baftas so a sweep can always be ended with one 
one award going to someone that we don't expect. So who knows? Maybe Michelle Yeoh does win here. And if she does, it's still competitive for the Oscar win. Otherwise, though, um, I really think that this is Kate Blanchett. Yeah, I I agree. I have Blanchett. I would probably prefer Yeoh. I don't know. They're both really good. Um, but I'm not going to not predict Blanchett until she loses. Mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to predict the like the the breakage of the sweep if it's never going to happen yeah completely agreed so let's move to best film actor where the nominees again in order uh, brendan fraser in the whale austin butler in elvis colin farrell in the banshees of inisherin bill nye in living and adam sandler in hustle Another one where i just i don't fully understand why brendan fraser is in first place here Especially after BAFTA. I think that this is just going to Austin Butler. I mean, I was in New Jersey a few weeks ago, and I think I messaged on our uh, Discord server, like, hey, you can bet on the Oscars in New Jersey. And it's like, oh, Austin Butler has plus 400 odds. Maybe I should do this. So I was like, nah, I'm okay. You did I'm sure if I looked oh. at them today, I didn't. I'm sure if I looked at it today, he's probably down to like oh, plus 100. He may even be negative now. So Austin Butler is winning this. If he was going to win anything in this next like seven days, it was going to be SAG, not BAFTA. The fact that he won BAFTA to me says he's winning SAG. Austin Butler is taking this. It's just what's happening. That said, if Brendan Fraser does win, I know we've disagreed with this in the past. I think if Brendan Fraser wins, it's still a race. I don't see Colin Farrell winning here. Unfortunately, if he was going to win, he would have won at BAFTA. Uh, But, you know, that would be a really cool win if they did go off the, the beaten path. But truly... Uh, BAFTA usually goes three or four, three out of four or four out of four, and this year I see them going either two or three, and I don't see Austin Butler not being one of the ones that comes along. Best Supporting Actress, where the nominees are Angela Bassett, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Carrie Condon, The Banshees of Inisherin, Jamie Lee Curtis, Everything Everywhere, All at Once, Stephanie Hsu in Everything Everywhere, All at Once, and Hong Chow the whale like i kind of alluded to before if they haven't voted yet the fresh new winner is right there for the picking who is very liked by respected actresses and actors however there's someone else in this who's even more so very light they just had that roadblock of they're in a marvel movie and that's angela bassett for wakanda forever like all the signs point to she should just win but at the same time that mcu thing in my head is like restricting me like is she really going to be the first person in mcu to win and it's not even the fact that she would be it it's the fact that an mcu performance will win because it's not like the joker where the joker's clearly shown like hey this is a character that we don't care we've nominated him before we're gonna do it again and i don't know i'm just restricted by that like divvy however no one else in this category is strong enough to make me not want to pick that however for sag i think i am leaning condon but i don't know well for sag I'm leaning Bassett because that just feels like the type of thing SAG would do. I feel like SAG is a little bit less biased against populist things than like BAFTA, for example. I don't think SAG will have the same issue, so I'm going to stick with uh, with Angela Bassett here, but there's a real chance of Carrie Condon winning, and even if Bassett wins here, Condon could still win the Oscar. Yeah, I think if Condon wins, it's over. If Bassett wins, I'm leaning Bassett, but I wouldn't be shot out of surprise. So let's move on to Best Film Supporting Actor, where <laughs> we just had a huge shocker because we thought Ki Hui Kwan was walking away with the season, and that's not the case. He just lost the BAFTA to Barry Keoghan. Uh, but the nominees here are Ki Hui Kwan, Everything Everywhere All at Once, Brendan Gleeson, The Banshees of Inisherin, Barry Keoghan, The Banshees of Inisherin, Paul Dano, The Fablemans, and Eddie Redmayne, The Good Nurse. Are we both still feeling Quan? I am, but I did just mention that uh, awards buyers don't really care about awarding the Joker. The Joker is in this category, but I'm still <laughs> going with Quan. Everything, everywhere. I-, I think that's just a BAFTA thing. I don't think that's going to continue over to SAG and continue over to the Oscars as well. Just I don't know. It still feels weird to me that with both Gleason and Kia getting in this category, and how like divided people have been all year about who's better. Clearly, we saw there was a definite take on that at BAFTA, but. I don't know if that's going to continue here at SAG. I have a really hard time believing that Quan is starting to lose. 
I, I have a really, really hard time believing that because we know that everything ever all at once is so strong with guilds. We know that Americans like it more than the Brits. We just, we know these things. So yes, it's shocking that he lost there, but I don't think that we can use that to point to any trends. But if he loses here, then the whole world is just like fucked. <laughs> What's going on? He needs to win here. For everything ever to win ensemble, he has to win. If he loses, everything ever is not winning ensemble. It's solely based on the fact that they didn't like the movie or they didn't like his performance enough to award it. And at that point, you can't give it the big prize if you didn't give the main piece of that, uh, at least in terms of awards so far this season, the award. Let's move to Best Stunt Ensemble, where the nominees are Top Gun, Maverick, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, The Woman King, Avatar, The Way of Water, and The Batman. It's Top Gun Maverick, right? I, I, I think so. I'm actually pulling up the stats right now for how often they go with what seems like the front runner. Last year, No Time to Die won. It beat Dune. Take your pick of what would have been the front runner. 2020, Wonder Woman 1984, it won. Tenet wasn't even nominated. Yes, uh, I remember that crazy. 2019, in game one, it beat Ford v. Ferrari, it beat Joker, Hollywood, Irishman, 18, mm. Black Panther won, 17, Wonder Woman won, uh, 16, Civil War won. So they've given it to superhero movies before. They're not opposed to that. From that list, it feels like they are much more about the stunts when it comes to stunt choreography than when it comes to like doing crazy things. Right? I agree, because I'm looking here to see Mission Possible. 2015, Rogue Nation was nominated and did not win. And uh, Fallout was also nominated, but it did not win. It, they lost wow. to Mad Max and Black Panther, respectively. You know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to switch. I'm not going to say Top Gun Maverick. kind of want to put Avatar. I'm putting The Woman King. That's a good one as well. Because that I has a ton of fighting, like fist-on-fist fist fights. Uh, plus, they would get to award an all-female stunt ensemble. Yeah, that's a good point about Woman King because it is the hand-to-hand -hand combat. Avatar has the doing stuff that no one does in movies sort of thing for stunts. And then Maverick is mm -hmm. the, the one that makes the most sense. But I'm glad I looked this up because I was also just putting Maverick. I'm going to put double points on it for gold. Yeah, Derby, it, it just made looking sense here, for it to be Maverick. They never really do the front runner. Like I guess you can say Mad Max was probably the front runner of that year. And Black yeah, Panther and that's the last well. time that it feels like there was. it was like a, a, a vehicle movie. Dunkirk and Baby Driver lost to Wonder Woman, which was also a lot of yeah. hand-to-hand hand hand, combat. It's hand-to-hand -hand combat. Hand-to-hand -hand combat is king here. So I think it comes down to Woman King or Black Panther. The reason I can't say Avatar is because of how much of it was CGI um, and how much of it was on a closed set. I, I don't feel like it has the narrative for a win just because I feel like people would look at that and go, what stunts? Even though there were stunts, it, it feels to me, if I'm putting myself in the mind of an actor voting on this, um, yeah. I wouldn't go with Avatar. I would go with either The Woman King or Black Panther. Black Panther's a bigger movie, but I'm leaning Woman King. I I'm going to agree with you. I like all the points I made, and to back you up there, Woman King has more hand-to-hand -hand combat. Everyone out there, that's why you turned into Fantasy Film Ball. No one else out there is saying Woman King, it's third place on Gold Derby. It started off fifth place in Gold Derby because what I do when I add everything in, I put them in order of where they're at originally until I do my final things to see, like, okay, where does stuff change? So, Woman King, that's our bold take here today for Film Stunt Ensemble. It may have underperformed in other categories, but guess what? It's still going to be a SAG winner. I agree with you there. I really think that, uh, that we've found our winner. And if it is Top Gun, uh, I will be not disappointed but i'll do i'll be disappointed myself for for tricking myself out of picking that one but this makes more sense but hey if maverick does win we both left the ledge because i also switched away my pick like i mentioned that was one of my two like my double points and i'm switching them away but now i have mm -hmm. double points for the woman king well at least this time uh we're both jumping together it's not you tricking me out of picking babylon for production design yeah i'll take my l there but hey i i have been telling you austin butler austin butler so now you I'm have here been with you, so it's a little payback you have been those are our screen actors guild award nominations let us know what you think down below leave a comment tell us if we're totally wrong and top gun is winning toast us roast us let us know what you think but as always my name is matt and my name is Dill, and this is Fancy Film Ball.